Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Arthur Bergeron. Uh, our guest today is Veronica Mitchell. Veronica is the transition navigator, the what? From the Discovery Center, the what? At Callahan Center. To find out all about the Discovery Center so and how we can help you, please stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Grace's friend, Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell, biggest law firm outside of Boston. Because there are 70 of us, uh, everybody does what they like, and I like this. I like doing elder law. This show, though, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. You may have seen them in one of my seminars where I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. The fact that their goal in life is simple. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. Does that sound familiar? And if you live in Framingham, you want to die in Framingham. And you want to live in Framingham. You don't want to move out to see your kid with your kids in California or Texas or whatever. You don't even want to go to Marlboro. You want to stay here because this is where your friends are. It's the community that you know. So the question is, how, who are the people that you really need to know, and what are the programs that you really know, need to know about in order to stay right here in Framingham? My co-host in the show is Grace O'Donnell, and the reason why I asked her to be the co-host is she knows all those people. She knows the people, she knows the programs, and she always finds these great guests. And today you've got a great guest for us to talk about a program, and I'm just really excited because i got no idea what it is. That's terrific. Grace? I'm, I'm very happy, Arthur, to introduce everyone to Veronica Mitchell. She's the Transition Navigator at the Discovery Center at the Callahan Center. And you may wonder what the Discovery Center is. Veronica is here to tell us all about that. Veronica. So, for, so first of all, I always ask because I'm the out-of-towner. So are you a local? Are you from for, I'm a uh, recent framing? local a of recent two local. years, correct. Our, I was going to say our last person was a recent local, recent local of like 45 years. So you're, you're more recent than Correct. That. Yes. I yes. did the transition two years ago, left the city of Boston, and moved to Framingham That's to right. a wonderful community. That's very exciting. That's great. Thank you. That's great. So you're living right here in town now? Yes, I am. And, and we're going to talk about... Everything that I don't know about, right? So, yeah. so I'd, I'd like to tell you a bit about how the Discovery Center came to be at mm -hmm. the Callahan, and then I'll have Veronica tell a little more about the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah. So there's an organization known as Empower Success Corps. They had worked a number of years in helping people um, in their later years, yep. those who are either in early retirement or those who have already retired, figure out what else they might want to do in their life now that their careers are over or uh, downsizing. Right. And they discovered they really had a knack for trying to help people figure out what really would put meaning back into their lives. And they decided they wanted to try to make this, uh, spread this further around. So they approached the Massachusetts Councils on Aging. There are 350 of us across the state. And they asked if we would be interested in having a discovery center at our location. They had approached me back in July of 2018, and at mm -hmm. that time, Framingham had only recently t changed from a town form of government to a city. And so I thought this is a perfect opportunity to make use of all of those volunteers who had served at town meeting, put all of their skills oh, that's right. and that's abilities right. to work in other aspects of the city. So I thought it would be a win-win both for Framingham and for those volunteers and other volunteers, potential volunteers, who maybe want to still contribute to their community, have some skills, but they're just not sure how they want to do that. And they've, and they've because if they were represented, if they were town meeting folks and they were coming, that means they, they have a sense of how the community works and how all that side works too. So it's like a huge pool. Can I just ask? No, you you they started you started here and they started here in 2018. So has this been going in Massachusetts through MCOA for a long time? No, we were one of five communities that chose to do this pilot program. So you're the pilot. I yes. see. I see. Framingham, Wellesley. 
Amesbury, Dartmouth, and Duxbury. So you're the only ones around. You're the only ones around here. Yes. So remember, now I'm out of town. So if Marlboro wants to do this, we have to be watching what you're doing, right? <laughs> You that's, could learn from us, and you, you could put your own flavor on it as well. That's very, that's really yeah. exciting. Yeah. And so, and so in, in, uh, your guest is, it, how, is this, how does this work? So Veronica Mitchell is the first transition navigator that was trained by Empower Success Corps. So I will let Veronica tell more about the nuts and bolts of what a transition navigator actually does in right. terms of helping people. Thank you, Grace. Thank thanks. you, Arthur. Well, thanks for coming on. This is really and it's, this is really exciting. It's this very is really exciting. exciting. Because so. I, I can actually sit in my participant's chair, but I'm now the navigator. So um, it's a program that is evolving even as I'm there because aging is evolving and people are retiring earlier and finding different avenues and, and ways to live their life. Um, I think it can be difficult also transitioning from having a full-time career um, and, and all of a sudden you're at home. And the first six months may be great. The first year may be luxurious. But after time... It gets old. It, I, I, I don't mean, know I if it gets old, but right. I think that when you're... Uh, you're, you're being engaged with the community. It gives so much enrichment to life. It gives you opportunities to bring up discussions that you may would have never had. Um, it just opens the door for so many people. And I, and I know, I shouldn't say I know, from, from, from what, I've, what I've heard, and I think it's, it's just true. It's especially true for men. I know it's true for men and women. But it, it, it coming out of the society in which in which we grew up, where, it, where where there was still kind of a larger percentage of men that were just at work, quote unquote, right, mm -hmm. and that the women, even if they had jobs, were more like kind of closer to home. A lot of these folks, they've got real skills, but have no, had did not have that sense of connection right. within the community. They had a, com a sense of connection within the within that set of workers, mm -hmm. which is now gone, right. And so that, that notion of kind of almost reintegrating into the community, that's like a real challenge. Yeah. That, well, you said something very interesting. You said it's, it's mostly men, you know, they, 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 they stop working and they're retired. And I just want to say something that I would well, say that- That's a sexist comment. I'll, I'll no, I, it had nothing that, to do no. with that. <laughs> but this is where the evolution of what's happening, the key yeah. of what, I, what I'm trying to say, is that my participants are more women than men. Really? Yes. And they're engaging. They're enthusiastic. Yeah. That's because the men, you think the men are just more wimpy and they're just afraid to do it? You know, and they're... Arthur. <laughs> no, I mean, really. I mean, right? Have they got an attitude? No, no not no. at all. Because actually I've had great opportunities, too, where the husband came in and the next thing I knew, the wife was making an appointment. Well, that's cool. And in one, op one case, uh, the wife came in again and the husband was recruited to come and see me. Because they're just kind of, there's like a whole new concept of, mm -hmm. of really kind of focusing. And, and, and kind of where, where does it go from there when, when folks come in to see you? Well, you we, do, we do an interview with them. We, yeah. we want to find out about our participants. We want to know what they enjoy. We want to know what their, what their professional background was. We, we want to build a relationship so that we're better equipped to give them the tools to go out there and find opportunities to be civically engaged. Wow, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but Veronica has had some very good success so far. I know you, the whole group has met with as many as 19 people and we've had five matches to date. And there was one in particular where you thought, given what their professional background was, that they might be interested in other types of volunteering, and then it ended up being more um, dealing with food. Do you want to speak to that one a little bit? Well, sure. So I had an attorney, and you, you kind of get an idea, and it's also the probing questions that you ask. Well, great, you were a corporate attorney for 10 years or 50 years. Did you really enjoy it? Is, Is that, that something fun? you'd be interested in, in nurturing mm -hmm. again? And a lot of the people that I get to work with um, really don't want to continue what their profession was. They, 
they want to engage in the community where they feel a sense of satisfaction that they've given. And they also have something to give back to their, their network of family and friends, and that is the conversation of civic engagement and what it does to enrich one's life. Right. Right. And, and that term civic engagement is also part of Framingham's initiative to become an age-friendly community. Mm -hmm. Civic engagement is one of the elements of being an age-friendly community. So this, again, is another way that this program is helping Framingham in even a larger aspect. Kind of moving in that direction. Now, can mm -hmm. you just kind of define civic engagement for me? So when you're, when you're, th when I hear those words, I think I know what that means. But what is that? What what do you, what is your view of what that means? Well, you have someone that has worked a profession, hasn't really had the time to get involved in the community to figure out what the needs of the community are. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of navigate them to find those opportunities and we give them the tools to find the opportunities. I mean, so the corporate lawyer is now working at Daniel's Table as a volunteer. Daniel's Table, remember I'm from out of town. Daniel's Table. Daniel's Which Table is. provides emergency food for people who are food insecure. Um, they reach out into the community, they prepare meals, they even provide frozen dinners for people to be able to um, have several on hand at I any see. time. They really have been a, a terrific partner in the city of Framingham for the I last see. Several years, and that's for folks know, across the age spectrum. This isn't fo absolutely focused on seniors throughout or all, I, all ages. I got it. I got it. So when you're saying civic engagement, it, when when I hear civic, I typically think about government. You know, so it's not. It could be a therefore, but not necessarily would be, in being involved as a volunteer in a program which is government run. It could be, but it, it could, could be. also be uh, dealing with all of those things that really are contribute like to the, the I will call it the cultural fabric of the community. It's mm -hmm. like all of the other things. Well, I, I think of the community as a family. Mm -hmm. They're your family. Yeah. And you think of the needs, of the basic needs of all your family members. Um, and what we don't know is how many people in our community are really in need. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do. But we're trying to enrich the lives of our participants. And it, it, it's enriching both. So the people that are giving are enriched and the people that are receiving are enriched. And that's pretty amazing, mm -hmm. right? Because I know when, I'm ta when I talk to seniors in general, you know, when I talk to folks, well, we just did this set of shows, and it was Frank, we were talking about Frank and Mary, and we talked about Frank and Mary at different ages. And the first set was 70 years old. And Frank and Mary are just coming to retirement, you know, and as I say, I identify with this, I'm going to be 70, you know, shortly, right? And I said, and I said to folks, you know, that's the time in which it's time to contribute. Yeah. Because when, when I think, I think especially among seniors, you say to yourself, there's this population of folks who very well may, at some point before they die, really need a lot of help, yeah. right? And the most obvious place to get it is from younger seniors. But the reason is just is because that's, that's the pool of volunteers now. When I think about when I was growing up, the pool of really qualified volunteers were all women because they were the women who weren't working, or they, in theory they weren't working. Of course, they were killing themselves, but they were raising me and you know uh, us, us, right? But but the, so they're highly skilled, often you know very educated, but you know w but it, but had time. But now they're all gone because they're all working. They're all working day jobs, right? So the pool is now the just the people you're describing. It's it's us. It's people who've got time. They got skills, and as opposed to the old days when when you know. Social Security was created. The reason why the magic age is 65 is that was the life expectancy, right? right? But now there are people living decades mm -hmm. who, who have got all, all this stuff to give. So it's, it's a huge pool. So how, how, do you, how do you outreach to that? You know, because I would think there'd be a lot of people who'd be interested. Well, a lot of it has to do with uh, Grace and the way that she runs the center. Um, we have the Callahan Courier which were announced the hours that we are in the offices. Um, and I think it's just 
the community that they have created at the Callahan Center is always engaging and trying to engage in what's going on at the center. And inevitably, there are people that are wondering, what's the new Discovery Center? What's going on over there? And so that's how we've, we've started to have our success stories to share with people. If, if I could also interject, uh, the Empower Success Corps, <clears throat> excuse me, also offers some informational programs. I think you might have been drawn into one of those, Veronica. One is called Discover Your Purpose. Another is, um, it's more about the, uh, it's not just the finances in your retirement. And so it starts people thinking about retirement isn't just money, but right. how do you want your life to look? What do you want to be doing with it? And so we have uh, a couple of those presentations done by Empower Success Corps, and some of them led people to become these transition and, navigators. And that's how you get interested? So that was, yes. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So it's a, just a feeder system. Mm -hmm. and, right. and on the on the, on the the flip side of that, how do you find the organizations to which these it, or to which these people might want to become involved or with which they may, they may want to become involved. Right? Well, we, we started, Veronica, off with a number of organizations that we know because the Callahan Center uh, partners with a number of other uh, entities in Framingham, the various food pantries, the Daniel's Table, yeah. the Metro West Humane Society. So we knew of a number of places where they are always in need of volunteers. And Veronica and our other two transition navigators, uh, Karen Jarose and Nancy Koval Wallace have mm -hmm. also put together a number of other organizations that they have gone on internet searches. As they've met with people and people have described what some of their interests might be, they yep. go looking on the internet. And so they're putting together this sort of resource database so that people who, if their interest is particularly in the environment, they may be able to say, ah, oh, here is the this group of agencies that we know that are looking for volunteers where you can particularly apply yourself where to you that kind of an in. interest. Yeah. But we also try to find out too because in some of the organizations you may look at the name and go, oh, I, I don't, I don't want to work, I don't want to volunteer there. Yeah. But within that organization there are many other opportunities. So we also sit and really read the website so that we can put in our information packet. Yeah. This website is cancer.org. However, that doesn't mean you're going to be working with cancer patients. And right. we really try to do our homework so that when we're giving out the information, our participants have a much easier time navigating. That's great. That's a great idea, right? It's funny, that just, it, it reminds me of something. I can't remember if it was on our show. There was a, there was a reference to this I bet it comes out of cancer.org that there are actually a set of volunteer drivers mm -hmm, right. who will drive people to their med yes, it was here. that's right. You brought you bring all these great people, right? Who will drive people to their medical appointments? And I remember hearing that going, who knew? You know, mm -hmm. I knew that a lot of times senior centers would coordinate programs like that, right. but to have kind of a targeted group like that, mm -hmm. and I would bet, especially if you're a person who's in a family and you've got a cancer survivor or someone who's right, it would just it, it'd be a real opportunity for you to do something really useful. But some people yeah. may not, but they yeah. automatically take that title as that's all I'm going to do. Right. And there's so much more in each organization that, op that, that can be offered to a participant. Mm -hmm. So I try to open up my eyes so that I can give the tools and have more success. That's pretty exciting. It is. That's really it exciting. Yeah. And so I, I'm, so I'm curious, so, so among the three of you, because there were three of you who were doing this? Yes. When you talk among yourselves, where, kind of, where do you see this going? You know, where do you, where, where are the, as far as you're concerned, the kind of opportunities for growth in terms of what you're doing? Because I can imagine this, you're getting, ending up with a lot of potential volunteers here, right? This is a pretty big city. Well, I, I don't think we will ever fill all of the volunteer yeah. opportunities, excuse me, that exist. Um, but I think this is a great way that we can be partnering with our other organizations that help people in all different avenues. So in some cases, Veronica, Karen, or Nancy might come across somebody who never thought of volunteering at the senior center. But one of the opportunities we have might be something that particularly res resonates with them that it might not have occurred to them.
So we're looking not only to potentially fill volunteer opportunities throughout the greater Framingham area, yeah. but also within our own center itself. Well, our second navigator was my first participant. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So, yes. And, and how did that first participant come to be a participant? How did they, how did he or she find she out about you? She takes classes and she's mm -hmm. a member of the center and she stopped by the office and she's now a part of our team. And she's now part of the organization. Right. Correct. And so it, it just, it just, it strikes me that there should, that there would be a lot of people that would be really interested in this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So how, how do you... How do you outreach to that larger population? Because you've got so many, this, this is a big city. Well, our, the Callahan puts advertisements on the Framingham source. We also yeah. put information in the Metro West Daily News on a regular basis. We have the city's website. We have our courier, our monthly newsletter. Yeah. And a lot of it is word of mouth. Uh, when people simply hear about it and as people are volunteering in other organizations, sometimes they pass that word on to others. So, um, but, but a lot, of, as you say, and, a lot and, of and yeah. having a show like and this show is like another this. perfect way to yeah. get more people aware of it. People who aren't already coming to the center that realize, hey, this is something else that this I could is, do. Right, right. And I know when Grace and I talked about doing this show, and it was one one of the goals was really to be to be doing just this, right? To be having to be having this vehicle through which a lot of people can just be realizing what's going on, mm -hmm. right? Especially people who wouldn't kind of necessarily who. You've got a community of folks at the Callahan Center, and it's a big community, but there's a lot more community beyond Absolutely. that, right? So to be trying to find people, and even people approaching retirement, people mm -hmm. who are saying, and you're having, you're starting to go, uh, I, I don't know, I don't well, know, what, this, what am I going to do? You well, know? I always tell people that you may not be interested at this time or at this juncture in your life, but you may know somebody that would be. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. yes because they tend to be your age, you know? Right. So you tend to know folks who are kind of like around. Or as you say, folks who, who maybe are not transitioning totally out of work. But they're but, cutting back. But they're cutting back. When I think of your corporate lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much all of us, we work, we, you know, the folks at Myrick O'Connell, it's, it's, that's 60 hours, it's a lot of hours. And you get to the point where you say, well, this is actually pretty entertaining, but not for 60 hours, right? So all of a sudden, some time opens up and, and, and you have, I think, probably people in all professions, maybe, maybe not for people who are senior center directors. Maybe you really wanted to be a senior center director. Yeah, I did. But I know a lot of people, a lot of lawyers, right, that that's their day job, right, because the thing they really loved doing didn't pay enough, you know, mm -hmm. so you, right, so they get some really smart guys, right, right? and women, right, because increasingly, I mean, I remember even when I was in school, the, the classes were almost 50-50, mm -hmm. men and women, and now it's really migrated upwards, so the, it's a pretty equally divided profession. Right. But you got these really smart people who had a million other interests, mm -hmm. right, but they didn't pay, and you need to, you know, raise your family and all that stuff. So to give people this opportunity is, it's, it's like a great gift to them. Well, sometimes you have to pull the information out of them, you know, you, you have to really kind of say, what do you think you'd be happy doing, mm -hmm. and what would you be excited to do 10 hours a week, or 10 yeah. hours a month, for example? And sometimes during the first appointment, you still can't figure it out. Because they haven't. No, but right? we, we figure it out as a team. And that's where we kind of work. And then we help them to get out into the community to be civically engaged. And ultimately, that's how you build your community, right? The other thing, Arthur, is yeah. sometimes when somebody simply experiences another transition in their life, uh, loss of a loved one, Sometimes that can put people into a very dark place. And sometimes getting out of your routine and doing something that does something for another person can really make a difference in your life. But sometimes if you're in that kind of a circumstance, you might not be thinking so clearly. So coming to someone like the Transition Navigators, they might be able to help you kind of get more direction in yes. what might make yes. you feel better in that particular point in your life and a lot of people that's what they find helps them through a grieving process is if they can be out in the community helping someone else in some other way that's a great point and and I suppose and that's 
And that's also that transition moment, because mm -hmm. you, you're really talking about a lot of couples right. that had always been together and so couldn't imagine doing things other than being together, except if one's dead, well, then you got two choices. Mm -hmm. You can just keep moaning about that, which I mean, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with just keep moaning about that, but there's also this other choice, which mm -hmm. is to say there's something, what are the things that I find meaningful about my life? Yeah. And there's probably a place to fit into that right here in, in Framingham. Yeah. Right. And there's even a circumstance as Veronica found. She moved here from another community. And look, what she, here she is volunteering already. So that's another that's right. terrific way of integrating yourself in a community and finding a whole new community of friends and family, as I call it. Yep. Uh, the friends that become yep. your family. And becoming a volunteer can then be a perfect way to grow that further and to, to enrich your own support network. This is, when it comes down to it, that's we all that's need other people to connect that's with. Right. So, so if you're Frank and Mary here in Framingham, this is the ideal thing sure. to do, right? Yes. So that you're not trying to find out who the people are in the programs that you need to know about. You actually are the program that you need to know about. You're actually helping other folks here, whether they are other seniors or people who are older than you that might really need, or anybody, and things that are directly directly involved in the things that you always were interested in, but you had a day job. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden you can like really be interested in them, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, this sounds like Framingham Cable Access too, because I remember all the people that yeah. we meet here are a lot of people that you could tell they had a day job, but they really and, wanted to do this. And they're volunteering their time, <laughs> and, now and they're, they're helping us and the rest of the community as well. Thank you so much. This was just Thank great. you for having me. Grace, thanks a million again. Thank you, Arthur. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham.